Hello and welcome to Tech Deals 120mm CPU cooler comparison. Which should you buy and what CPU should you use each of these for? That's what we're covering today. Cooler Masters Hyper 212 Evo for $30, Corsair's H60 Liquid Cooler for $60, and Corsair's H80 IV2 $90 Liquid Cooler. Each excellent coolers in their own right, each of which I've covered in separate videos which I will link in the video description below. If you would like to see more details about any of these, please go check those out. Furthermore, I've also linked all of these and everything I'll mention in the video today to both Amazon and Newegg in the video description below. If you found this video helpful or useful to you and you're considering buying one of these, please check out my links, comparison shop between Amazon and Newegg, uh, see which one has it for the best price and buy it where it makes most sense for you. Now first, let's talk about Intel processors. Intel makes two basic categories of chips multiplier locked and multiplier unlocked. The way you can tell which one you have is whether there's a K at the end of the model name. Let's start with the multiplier locked chips. These are two examples of such chips. This is the i3-6100 and the i5-6500. Great CPUs, good performers, good price. Both of these chips come with their own coolers and I have a sample of that to show you here. This is the Intel stock cooler. It's included in each of these boxes at no extra charge. If you buy either of these CPUs, I recommend that you use the Intel cooler and that you not buy any of these aftermarket coolers. I don't believe they're necessary. This provides all the cooling you need at no extra price when you buy one of the multiplier lock chips that does not have a K at the end of it. Now, some people may want to buy a fancier cooler because they prefer the aesthetics of it. This, for example, is big and beefy looking and maybe you look at it and go, that just looks cool and I want an awesome system that just looks awesome. Fair enough, that's fine, but just keep in mind that you're buying it for looks and not performance. The Intel stock cooler runs the lock chips just fine. As far as temperature and noise go, the modern Intel stock coolers run the chips cool and they are quiet, the fan on them is quiet. If you end up with a noisy stock cooler, get the cooler replaced, there's something wrong with it because they're very, very silent these days. That brings us to the multiplier unlocked Intel chips. There are several to choose from, I will show you three here. We have got two i7s and an i5. This is the i5-6600K. It is multiplier unlocked, so it can be run faster than its factory default configuration. If you buy this, then I recommend that you run it on the one that's sitting on the Corsair H60. Why? Well, to explain that, let's talk about the Hyper 212 first. Now, the Hyper 212 for $30 is a good cooler, and you could easily run this chip at 4.2 gigahertz or faster on the Hyper 212. But your temperatures, especially if you go beyond 4.2, will start to get rather warm there will come a point where you'll run out of either temperature or voltage for overclocking, and with the Hyper 212, you may very run, well run out of temperature first. Furthermore, it's worth noting that there's a design difference between air and liquid coolers, and this is ultimately why I recommend the H60, even though it's twice the money at $60. The Hyper 212 has a radiator that takes the heat out of your processor, and then the fan blows over the radiator to get the heat out of the radiator. The problem is, is this keeps the heat inside your computer. This circulates the heat inside your machine, putting the stress on your case fans to exhaust it. Now, if you have a big, large, full tower case, and you have multiple case fans to exhaust lots of heat out of your case, fair enough, you may actually get really good cooling performance out of this. But please note, if you have a medium or mid tower case, and maybe only one or two case fans, all the heat generated by your processor will be combined with the heat from your motherboard, your system memory, and your graphics card, forcing your system to work extra hard to exhaust it out of your system. You don't have that problem with a liquid cooler. The nice thing about a liquid cooler is this radiator right here takes all the heat via these hoses right off of your CPU. This is the water block. This is actually what installs on your CPU. Then the liquid coolant runs here to your radiator, a fan attaches to the radiator, and this goes on the back or top of your case and exhausts all the heat out of your case. The heat from your CPU is not mixed with your system RAM or your graphics card, allowing your entire system to run cooler. 
That is one of the biggest benefits of liquid coolers over air coolers. Now you may see tests online if you search other websites. On an open air test bench, the H60 and the Hyper 212 Evo actually have very similar cooling performance. Way too many tests that I have seen do these on open air test benches in an air conditioned room such as this with the motherboard mounted open and flat and the cooler here and the graphics card and RAM producing no heat, not to mention not hard drives, there's no SSDs producing heat because you have the entire room of circulation. The only proper way to do these tests is to install it all in a computer case and run it closed, which is how you actually use your computer. In my experience, the Corsair H60 does run cooler than the Hyper 212 when actually installed in a computer case. For the extra $30, you gain something that's easier to install. Look at the size of this. This has to fit on top of your CPU, the RAM's around it, your case is here. This is, this is large, whereas this is not. This is easy to install. These hoses turn. So you can position this, and this will turn 90 degrees each way. So you can mount this on the back, you can mount this on the side, on the top of your case. It's a very flexible mounting options. For $60, it's a very reasonable priced item. Now you might ask, wait a minute, why wouldn't I then recommend the H80? Simple. Now you're spending $90 to cool a $220 CPU. If you're going to spend that much more money, why not just buy an i7? I think that once you step above the H60, we're in i7 territory. So in short, that was a whole lot of words to say, use the Corsair H60 for an i5 6600K unlocked CPU. You should easily get 4.5 gigahertz, if not more, out of this chip using that cooler. It's a good combination, $60 cooler, $220 processor. It's a nice option. Now, if you're on an extreme budget, there's nothing wrong with the Hyper 212 Evo, but my recommendation is the H60 if you can, if you can make that happen. Now let's talk about the H80i and the i7 processors. This is the only unlocked 8i5 CPU, but there are multiple i7s that are unlocked. I'm going to show you two of them. The i7-6700K and the i7-6800K. Skylake and Broadwell E. Now I have covered these extensively in comparison videos in the past. I'm not going to do that here. But what I will say is that both of these chips are K chips. They're multiplier unlocked. Using this radiator cooler, you should be able to get between 4.6 to 4.8 gigahertz out of the Skylake 6700K, and you should be able to get between 4.2 and 4.4 gigahertz out of Broadwell E, the 6800K. Both of those are good overclocks off of the default clock speeds. Both of them will give you excellent performance at very cool temperatures. Your main limitation to overclocking on the H80i V2 Corsair is going to be voltage, not temperature. And I demonstrated that in my overclocking video for the 6800K. I've got a nice big Corsair cooler on it. Temperature was no issue whatsoever. The chip was running very cool. It was all voltage limitations. So no matter how much cooling you put on a processor, at some point voltage becomes your limitation, at least within reasonable parameters. There is liquid nitrogen cooling for world record attempts, but that's way outside the scope of this video. I do want to call your attention to something, however. The actual radiator itself. Take a look at how thick that is. Take a look at how thick that is. It's double the radiator. And if you look at the fins, the fin density on the H80 is tighter than the fin density on the H60. Now to compensate for this, they provide two fans. The speed of the air is not substantially changed, but two fans mean that the fin density is increased and thus the cooling performance is increased compared to the H60. I would estimate based upon my experience of multiple liquid coolers that the H80 has up to double the cooling performance of the H60. For only $30 more. For an extra $30, you get a lot more cooling performance. But again, the reason I wouldn't put it on this is simply because you're spending almost $100 on a liquid cooler for a $200-ish CPU. It just seems to be mismatched in my mind for cooling performance versus what you're paying for the processor. So that's the Intel line of CPUs. What about AMD? 
Now AMD has two major line of processors. They have their low-end APU line, the A8, A10, and A12, along with the standalone X4, 860K, and 880K chips, such as this 860K right here. On that side of things, I would recommend looking at either a Hyper 212 Evo or the Corsair H60. For budget entry-level CPUs, I don't see the need in spending a lot of money on a cooling solution. Frankly, if you have the factory cooling solution that comes in the box, I would recommend sticking with it and waiting to see what AMD comes out with in early 2017 with their new upcoming Zen line of processors. Now, having said that, we have the other end of AMD chips, the FX processors, which come in four, six, and eight core chips. On that end of things, I would suggest considering either the Corsair H60 or the H80i V2. Why? Because as you move up in those line of chips, they run hotter and use more power and thus need more cooling. For the four and six core chips, such as the FX6300, which is a six core processor, I would recommend the Corsair H60 cooler. For $60, it's a reasonably priced option for those reasonably priced chips. Do you have an eight core AMD processor, such as the FX8300, 8320, 8350, and so on? you might want to take a look at the Corsair H80i V2. Now, compared to the price of those processors, it is a relatively expensive option. However, this will provide the kind of cooling necessary to get really good overclocks out of those high-end eight core processors from AMD. They do run hotter than the Intel equivalents. And so while they cost less to buy, they do need the extra cooling of the H80 in order to get the most possible overclock out of those processors. Now, having said all of that, if you don't yet own an FX processor or any of the AMD chips, you might consider waiting until next year when AMD's Zenline comes out. Either that or just buy an Intel chip if you're buying today. But I understand many people own the AMD chips and have owned them for a number of years. So if you want to get more performance out of them, those are options to consider. I hope this comparison has been helpful to you. Three different choices, three different price points, $30, $60, $90. As I said at the beginning of this video, all three will be linked in the video description below, both to my individual unboxings and first reviews, as well as to Amazon and Newegg. By all means, check out those links before, below. Like this video if you like it. Don't if you don't remember to subscribe to my channel with the big huge red button right down there. Questions and comments go in the comments box below. And as always, video description, links, I'd appreciate it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.